Hello. My name is Literary Haley, and I love to talk about books, specifically romance books, where audiobooks are my jam. Welcome to a weekly reading vlog. I have lots of chores to do. I have tons of laundry to get done. So I need an audiobook in order to manage this. And I think I'm going to start with Bloodied Hands by Adelaide Forrest. This is book one in the Blondie Crime Syndicate series. This is on Kindle Unlimited. Also, if you pay for the Audible Premium membership, which is like $15 a month, you can add these to your library to listen for free, if that makes sense. So I don't have to pay for the audiobook. <laughs> a little synopsis on Bloodied Hands. She's an innocent, caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. My angel is the one who got away, the only person that I loved. When she is caught in an unsanctioned bank robbery in my territory, only my reputation protects her. She should have stayed away. Instead, she charges back into my life like a shining beacon in my otherwise bleak existence. She has no place in my world where hardened criminals toy with the lives of the innocent. Bloody Hands is a full-length standalone novel with an H but the series presents a better reading experience when following the suggested reading order. The series contains dark elements, including over-the-top anti-heroes who do as they please. Read at your own discretion. Okay, so that's good to know because this is in a series and I was figuring that it was going to follow the same couple. And I typically have like a hard time when it comes to that kind of thing because I, I'm okay with like duets. Trilogies is kind of pushing it. And once it gets past that point, when it comes to a couple, um, I tend to, I don't think it's boredom, but I think it's like, I feel unsatisfied. I want them happy and in love. You know what I mean? We have a soundtrack. I'm kind of debating on if I want to listen to it. I usually like to try to before I get into books. I have lots of laundry that I need to put away. So I might pass on that and just jump straight into the reading. I'm really excited to get into this. I've read Adelaide Forrest before and I really like her writing style. And I have a feeling I'm going to really like this book. Let's just jump into it. I'm almost done with my laundry. I jumped in the shower and I've just finished chapter six. So much has already happened. It starts out with them 12 years in the past together. He breaks up with her. We don't really know why. And then fast forward. She is a chef. She's cooking. That is the career that she's on. She goes to the bank one day and then she's involved in a robbery these guys come in and then they recognize her for who she is so she's like hmm she's pissed off because she's like how dare you i'm under your protection when we have nothing to do with each other he goes to his house and then he's like you think i'm gonna let you go now that i have you in my life so he tells her to meet him for dinner that they have a date and she's declined um very fast pace i've made it to chapter 18 they go on the date while they're on this date they run into a um like a rival of his and he is enamored starts being creepy towards her and now she is in danger right because this rival has eyes for his woman now so he just makes himself right at home lets himself into her house cuddles her while she's sleeping i decided to do my nails they are really cute they have like little daisies on them they look horrendous though absolutely horrendous up close like that these are the extra short olive in june and look one's already popped off they always have the cutest designs but they do not work for my nails at all i wish that they did because they could be so cute but they're just so bad they also because of the i think it's because of the curvature of them when they're pressed down onto my nail my nails are in pain <laughs> So I think I'm going to take these off and maybe I'll paint my nails tomorrow, which is kind of sad because they are so cute. But also these are expensive. So the ones that I get from Amazon are way cheaper and they do not pop off immediately after I put them on my hands. Also, they've slept together and he has since found her birth control. Pretty sure he's gonna replace it because he wants to impregnate her so she cannot leave him. Yeah, I love that. Not for her. <laughs> oh, and her family has just found out that he is back in her life and they are not happy about it because of how he ended things. 
and they just think that their daughter deserves more. And I'm gonna take these nails off and get back into reading. He packed up her house while she was out and forced her to move in with him. <laughs> oh, you can see all my nail stuff. We're making progress, y'all. She's obviously not about it. She's very upset that you would do that rightfully so i finished bloodied hands which is book one in this series it is a standalone pretty fun read overall very possessive hero who will do anything to get what he believes is his in all honesty i came for the birth control tampering i know i know and just that possessiveness you know and it delivered it did i do wish that he did more groveling but it is what it is it's almost nine o'clock at night and I'm going to start A Pirate's Love by Johanna Lindsay. I have stumbled across this gorgeous, gorgeous edition of this book. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. It doesn't have an audio, so that's kind of been like my biggest hold off when it comes to this. It's going to take me a million years to get through it and that's okay, but hopefully I can finish this book by the end of this week. I did pick out some tabs because I will tab this. I won't annotate it with like I won't mark in this book but I will use my little moments that I want to remember and then in addition I have this little sticky note that I will write like character descriptions and that kind of thing extra things that I really need to remember because I have a goldfish memory I have really high hopes for this book it's gonna be amazing I just I can feel it in my, I can feel it in my bones I can feel it in my bones I actually never realized that this book was the second book that Johanna Lindsay has ever written and you can definitely tell this is very choppy and I guess that's all I can explain it as is very choppy I am 50 pages in and a lot has already happened so the heroine in this one she was raised on a covenant I think that's how you say it with like nuns and whatnot she's 19 now she is set to be married so she's on her way by ship to her betrothed ship gets taken over by pirates pirates come they kill the whole crew the captain takes her v card yeah it's just very choppy and kind of i don't want to say immature i don't think that's the right word um but it's just not as well developed as her other novels are so i honestly don't even know if i want to continue it but we'll see um it could be cool to see like where she's came from and how far she's come but it's a pirate romance so i i think i'm just gonna stick it through it's now 11 30 i've made it to chapter 9 in this and i'm gonna go to bed but first let's talk a little bit about our heroine in this one she is a feisty girl with lots of daddy issues he is gonna try to gonna try to break her so apparently they're only going to have a week together this book is chunk and we're only right here so i don't i don't know he's obviously gonna fall in love with her also we got basically forced proximity one bed trope he is forcing her to stay in his cabin with him despite the fact that she tried to him that is a wrap on monday's reading i finished one whole book and got started on an eyeball read good night and i'll see you in the morning another day another book i am going to read beautiful carnage by heather ashley i debated on reading this or the lady in the orc by finley fenn and i have decided i'm just gonna do beautiful carnage because the audiobook is on my script or ever end gonna make lunch and i'm pretty sure this is gonna be like a really dark and unhinged romance it's a dad's best friend i think yes this is a steamy dad's best friend age gap romance i just know a lot of people have some issues with this book because she pines after him when she's 16 he declines her obviously now she's 18 and uh yeah in lord help me i am blushing <laughs> i'm a little over 20 percent in this book and i'm obsessed i took a little break to go to the post office so i figured i'd share my unboxing with you this book is like the ultimate possessiveness very forbidden and taboo romance it's absolutely insane and it's definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea but it is mine and so far, honestly, I highly recommend. I'm obsessed with it. It's very rough. Um, 
very hot, very steamy, very spicy, all of the things. And so far, her dad, so there's six guys and her dad is a part of this crime syndicate and she knows that she can never have him so she tells her father that she will marry somebody to make their like alliance stronger she's engaged to marry this guy who like nobody likes not even any of the six guys like the hero in this is pissed off because he had a plan he he wanted her and he was gonna take her when she turned 18 but those plans are ruined on her 18th birthday he's not about and so he decides to do something about it and when he does she is a little bit shook by it because he's turned her down in the past i mean babes you were underage okay it's just so hot and on that note let me show you what i got let's start out with the historicals i picked up vivid by beverly jenkins this is a hardcover. I thought it was going to be the mass-produced paperback, but it's totally fine. This was published in 1995, which was the year that I was born. And I have a plan to put together a little video of books that were published the year I was born. So I'm really excited to get into that one. I also think it has an audiobook, which is a need around here. And then from Pango Books, I picked up these two titles and she gave some cute little stickers love it so much and look at this little card i picked up midnight angel by lisa claypass and this is another one that was published in 1995 tis why i picked it up i picked up when love awaits by johanna Lindsay. i'm obsessed with this cover here we go and it's actually in really good condition considering how old it is and then one that does have a step back and i'm actually shook about it because i was not expecting it is when angels fall by megan mckinney i love this cover so much and then <sighs> love it and then these two i have goddess of the hunt which is book one i don't remember which one is book two i think this is two and this is three i could be wrong um but these are supposed to be her steamier works and I believe these also have audiobooks and you cannot go wrong with Tessa Dare. The last book I got is The Fabric of Our Souls by K.M. Moronova. I'm totally butchering that. This has a stunning interior. I ordered this from Barnes & Noble and usually indie published books are kind of stiff. This is not stiff whatsoever and it is stunning. I mean, even the paperback is absolutely stunning. So. I cannot wait to read this. The audiobook doesn't come out until June, I believe. So I will probably wait until then to jump into this. But I've heard that this is heartbreakingly amazing. Happy hump day. I forgot to update. I did finish Beautiful Carnage yesterday. That book gave everything that I wanted. Obsessed. Very steamy, very spicy. Probably already said that. Highly recommend. The audio was fantastic. And last night I started Midnight Angel by Lisa Claypass. I'm excited for the like mystery element within this book. I've got some organization that I want to get done today. I still need to finish up laundry. I know. I just need to put it away. And a couple of things I want to go through and donate and clean up around the house. That sort of thing. That is going to be my day today. But so far in Midnight Angel, the heroine is... So the prologue starts with the heroine and she is being imprisoned. She fakes her death. Now she's out. She enlists the help of some family friends, I believe. And now she is going to be a governess to the hero's 12-year-old daughter. And so far, I'm really loving it. I'm a little over halfway into Midnight Angel and they're finally in love. Well, not in love, but he is in love with her, which means shit's gotta hit the fan, right? But I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna edit some footage and I'm going to watch Priscilla. It's only 8.30, but I am super tired and I'm just ready to go to bed. We had a long day. We had to go to Costco and cleaning and all that other stuff. And now it is just time for me to be off of my feet and resting and relaxing. Good night and I'll see you tomorrow. I have gotten absolutely zero reading done today. It is already 3.30 in the afternoon. We went on walks, rode our bike. I'm going to enjoy my second cup of coffee and I'm going to get into reading and cleaning.
I also ordered some stuff from Fabletics and I want to try it on. Hopefully I like it. I really like Fabletics. I've bought in their stuff since like 2013 and the quality is amazing. Pricing is amazing if you're a member. So let me try that stuff on before I get into reading. Okay, so this angle is not going to be it, but I got an outfit and then this sports bra. The outfit came with this sports bra and these pants here is the green sports bra on super cute the fabletics clothing was perfection have i started reading it no i have not i've actually decided i'm going to shower because it is hair wash day and it's cold i don't like to go to bed with wet hair so i'm going to shower and then while i'm making dinner i will listen to an audiobook hopefully because i want to read today but not every day is a reading day you know it is what it is things happen i finished midnight angel by lisa clay pass and it was pretty good i don't it wasn't my favorite what i did enjoy was the secret identity thing the heroine running away to avoid being also really loved the relationship between the heroine and the hero's daughter what i wish there was more of was the like the story of them falling in love like next thing you know like boom they're in love but also it was kind of like it didn't make sense for the character because in the beginning you have the heroine who was like i'm never gonna get married again i will never love anybody as much as my wife but then he meets her and he still feels that way in the beginning and then all of a sudden it like changed and it was like but i thought you would never marry in all of the side characters and everything are saying the same thing like oh he's never gonna marry yada 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 whatever so it was kind of like that part it was like meh however i do think that i'm gonna like the next book in the series i think it's called prince of my dreams or something like that i think i'm gonna like that book better and uh surprise surprise i got the physical in the mail from thrift books today that has a gorgeous step back so i'm really excited to read that one there's also an audiobook which i will listen to of course it's 11 o'clock at night I'm not really tired and i blame that on me sleeping until 12 30 today after i took my child to school and now because of that i have messed up my sleeping schedule so i'm kind of debating on if i want to continue a pirate's love by johanna Lindsay, or if i want to start a new book to love a dark lord by ann stewart i'm kind of leaning towards this one but i don't know i might read a little bit of that and hopefully that will make me like a little bit tired i'm logging off for the day and i'll see you in the morning We've made it to Friday. I am going to do my nails. I have a PR box that I need to unpackage. That's why I want to do some cute little press-ons. And I'm going to read The Lady and the Orc. I know earlier this week I said I didn't have the audio for it, but it turns out I did. So um, yeah, I'm going to read that. I haven't read a monster romance in a long time. I don't know why. I really enjoy them when I end up reading them. It's just been a minute and I I need it. <laughs> I completed my nails. These are the set that I get from Amazon. I love them so much. I'm also 15% into The Lady and the Orc and I'm obsessed. Obsessed. This is what I love about Monster Romances. There is so much C-U-M. It's so much. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I'm gonna get back into reading. Mm -mm -mm. I'm showered and ready for bed and it is the weekend. And I'm trying to plan out my content for next week and my laptop is going to die. So it's looking like I'll probably just have to do that tomorrow because it's not going to survive, babes. It's not going to survive, which is fine. That means that I guess I'll just read. Cheers to the weekend. I slept in a little bit. I'm going to finish the lady in the work today and then it snowed on us. So probably have to clean up some of the snow but first let's talk about the hero in the lady in the orc because he is rude he's just really he's a really mean hero but i think it's because he's kind of like a himbo and so he doesn't recognize like how mean he's truly being but she's not afraid to stand up for herself but it's like also kind of like i don't know if gut-wrenching is the right word but like it makes me like 
hearing about her like just like distancing herself emotionally from him but it also makes it hard because he releases like these pheromones because she's his mate they make her do the opposite of what she wants you know what i mean i'm almost halfway in in the audio is fantastic I'm having a really good time listening to this and she just found out she's pregnant but it's only been like a week she's like how in the world do you know this? He's like, well, your scent changes, so I can smell my son on you. Which she's not really happy about because she was going to leave, but it's looking like she probably can't do that now. But I'm going to jump back in, probably knock this book out, and hopefully get this video, this vlog out today. Fingers crossed. I also have some videos that I want to film. I need to be better at, like, sitting down and doing like recommendation videos and that kind of thing. I have so many ideas, so many things that I want to film, but I just don't have like the, not that I don't have the time, but I need to find the time and place to film content. I am about 80% into The Lady in the Orc. We've got some major betrayal and I'm working on these tiny little covers. So in my planner, I like to do like my anticipated releases of each month. And then this one, which is Viscount in Love by Eloisa James. I got reached out to see if I wanted an ARC copy of this, which this comes out July 23rd. This is the first in a new series. And I was like, the snow is falling on the roof from the trees. Um, Anyway, I like Eloisa's writing. So I was like, hello, first in a new series as well. Like, yeah, I want that. And these babies are all coming out in April. I'm gonna add these to my April. Oh wait, not this one. But I gotta add these to my April side of my calendar. So I'm gonna do that and I'm going to continue reading because I'm like, what the hell? How is this gonna end? Obviously it has to end with an HEA, but we're 80% in and she's about to go to back to her other or her old life. So I'm like, I don't know. I finished Lady and the Orc. Loved it. And I filmed content for the tube today. I'm feeling invincible. Next thing I need to do is plan my content for next week because I still haven't managed to do that. It's still snowing out there. I don't know if you can tell. I'm kind of debating on if I want to read another book or if I want to... I don't know because here's my thing. I don't know when I want to upload my weekly reading vlogs because I read every day of the week. So so there might be a day where it's like intertwined. I don't know how to explain it. But I don't know if I want to end the week on a Saturday or a Sunday is all I'm getting at. Or when I want to upload this. Is I kind of want to upload my weekly vlogs on Sundays. Which would mean it would end on Saturday. Right? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. So I have since decided I'm going to probably post my reading vlogs on Mondays. And then that way I can go from Monday to Sunday. And then Sunday night have the finalized version upload it and then monday start a new reading vlog i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes i think that's kind of how i want to <laughs> go about this on that note i'm gonna start the packing wrong number by cr jane i do have the audio version of this so i'm gonna do the kindle and listen at the same time it's like a dark hockey romance and I just need that in my life right now. Okay, I said I know I need a dark, but holy hell, I'm like on two pages of this prologue and goddamn. I'm almost 70% in and I'm not a huge fan of insta-love and this is very, very, very much insta-love. This is like a meh read for me, in my opinion. I'm holding out hope. There's a lot of tropes in here that I love and enjoy reading. This man literally tattooed her name on his before he even like met her in person yeah that's crazy but i vibe with that you know i've only got like an hour left in the pecking wrong number but i'm ready for bed and i will just finish tomorrow this guy is like literally crazy he's completely isolated her from everything like the obsession is real obsessed okay in the very beginning he hired a pi to like investigate her he got all of her information her background found out where she lives and then he like goes and peeks on her he then like bribes her landlord to evict her and then uh, same thing with her job he tells her job to uh, fire her and so like she has no choice but to live with him he's just trying to make her as obsessed with him as he's obsessed with her and just like totally making her completely dependent on him and i'm like this is crazy 
But yeah, so I'm walking off for the night and I will see you tomorrow. Sunday fun day, you know what they say. Um, so I finished the pucking wrong number and my final thoughts on the book are definitely meh. If I didn't have the audio, I would have probably lost interest to be honest. There was so much potential, but the execution just fell a little bit flat for me, unfortunately. Like characters acting out of out of character. For instance, she in the very beginning is told that like men ain't shit. Her mother's like dying wish is like to not give in to men, basically. And she does just that. There's no like inner, I maybe, I, you know what I mean? It was just like, he's the only one who I've ever felt like this for, blah, 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 whatever. It just didn't really make sense. And then his characteristics of like stalking her and all of that other stuff also just didn't make sense. Like there was no, he just saw her and wanted her. And I, I don't know. Um, It just wasn't. It wasn't there for me, unfortunately, which is fine. Not every book is going to be a hit. I'm curious to see how the other books go in the series, but we'll see. I started to Love a Dark Lord by Anne Stewart. There is an audio, so I'm doing that and I'm cleaning and organizing. I also need to do some laundry and that kind of stuff. I don't really want to. I don't really want to go to the laundromat today, but maybe I'll just go tomorrow. And we might be moving by the end of the week, so I need to prepare all of that kind of stuff and like put away all of these books and whatnot since we do live in a fifth wheel and that kind of stuff cannot travel like that. I got some organizing on my shelf done. Also reorganized my books on my nightstand. My hair is looking crazy, but I'm on chapter six of To Love a Dark Lord and I'm honestly kind of bored. I'm very glad that there is an audiobook. We're gonna get pizza for dinner because I don't want to cook. Let's just look at all the water that has been collected from my dehumidifier. Just a random thought because you gotta protect those books. This little guy from Amazon, it does a phenomenal job. I have two of them, one in our bedroom and one in the living room. The amount of water that I collect at the end of the week is absolutely insane. I'm a little over halfway into Love a Dark Lord. I'm not gonna finish it today, so it won't be in the wrap up of this vlog, but that's fine. It's gotten better. It is a slow burn. The hero is basically using the heroine to get some type of revenge, which we don't know why he's seeking this revenge. We just know that the heroine fits his revenge needs like to a T. He's standoffish because he knows that if he does anything with her, then his revenge is going to be ruined. She's thus fallen in love with him and uh, yes, I'm curious to see how that's gonna go. It's 10.30 at night and it's time to wrap up this video. If you guys have made it this far, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I look forward to filming more content like this. If you like it, please let me know because I don't know, this was really fun. I really enjoyed this. I also feel like I got a lot more out of my reading experience than I would normally. Like usually I will do like little excerpts and like clips on TikTok and stuff, but this was on a whole different level and it felt really fun. I don't know how else to explain it other than the fact that it was just fun. And like this is pretty simple content for me to film too. Like hello, reading and talking about books hello things that I love I can totally do that all in all I think I had a really solid reading week I had some misses and that's totally okay but let's talk about my favorite read of the week which is going to be the lady and the orc I'm not really surprised that a monster romance was my favorite read of the week this gave me everything that I wanted it was that was a great time that was the highlight read of the week. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Let's do it again. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.